say that I'm confused and unsure of what to do is an understatement. Hi my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Amy and I'm a cruelty-free makeup enthusiast. I'm sorry if you could hear a dog barking. Our new next door neighbor just moved in and she has a tiny little dog who's super cute but he's very loud so I apologize in advance for that barking. Um, today we are doing an episode of my Coffee Corner series where we grab a cup of joe and we can talk about kind of current events, what's going on in the makeup world and our opinions about everything. Things. So I've got my coffee here. I just freshly brewed it. It's nice and warm um, and I am ready to kind of jump into this because something recently came up uh, in kind of the cruelty free world that I think should be definitely addressed. I don't have the answers. I'm not exactly sure where to go from here uh, but I wanted to make you aware about it and so we can start a conversation because I actually think this is a game changer. One of the hardest things about being a cruelty-free um, content creator and blogger and also consumer is that things change quite quickly. Um, there are cosmetic brands that can enter a certain market, leave a certain market, and you know their cruelty-free status can change just like that. Well there is no legal definition of cruelty-free which makes it kind of harder to discern to begin with. Most of us bloggers kind of follow a similar list of questions when figuring out if a company is cruelty free or not. They generally have to follow these following guidelines. So I'm gonna look down to read this off to you just because I don't wanna mess anything up. So they have to confirm that their brand does not test on animals at any point during production from the ingredients to the finished product. And then they also have to have an agreement with their suppliers that they do not test on animals as well. They cannot allow third parties to test on animals on their behalf. They cannot test on animals where required by law. And then lastly, where they are selling their product. So they can't engage in animal testing. The suppliers can't engage in animal testing. No third parties should be testing on animals on their behalf. And then lastly, they should not be selling their products in places where testing is required by law, such as mainland China, or what we always thought was mainland China. So that's kind of been the general consensus. So there's definitely a lot of kind of different variables and variations where this can go. So for example, most likely this is how we were seeing a cruelty-free product, right? We have a product that's made in the U.S., for example. So this is Aether Beauty. Their products are made here in the U.S. If Aether which is a cruelty-free and vegan company, wanted to enter the mainland Chinese market because their product is made in the U.S., basically what that means is that to go there, uh, China requires by law that they would have a third party test their products on animals to ensure its safety um, to be able to be put on shelves in China. So that's that there. Now, the caveat to that is that a product can still be cruelty-free if it's made in China. So we have this Ace Beauté right here, this beautiful bronzing palette. So this product is actually made in the People's Republic of China. Because it's made in China and they don't sell in mainland China, they're able to be cruelty-free because Making your products in China is perfectly fine. No testing happens. It's only if you decide to sell in China where that testing um, happens. So that's why uh, many products who are that are made in China, as long as they're not sold in mainland China, they're good. They're most likely cruelty-free as long as they um, follow the other guidelines that's required. Now I really try to focus on the positive with my blog about how we actually can all make a difference by the purchases that we make. And I try not to get into the really dark side of everything. Uh, that information is out there that I, I encourage people to research. Um, millions and millions of animals are tested on in labs a year. and millions of animals die a year as well. And it's not just um, rats, or, but it's also bunny rabbits. It's also beagles, uh, the dog uh, beagles. I, I highly recommend looking up 
um, Project Beagle Share, which is a dog rescue that rescues these poor animals that are tested on, and then they give them homes. But it's very heartbreaking. There's these stories that, you know, I, I saw one where a beagle had um, fragrance sprayed in its eye during testing. It had never been outside of a cage. It's never had walked on grass before. It's very heartbreaking. Um, that information is out there, um, so I encourage you to look at it. That being said, I try not to be militaristic with anything. You know, I support a lot of friends who are not cruelty free. Um, you know, you don't have to be cruelty free to be my friend or anything like that. Um, but I encourage people, of course, to look at cruelty free products and see, you know, what they're purchasing. Absolutely. So here's where it gets kind of <laughs> iffy is that, um, you know, it's there is a like certain divides within the cruelty free community there are people who only use vegan products which i completely understand there's people who will only buy from companies that do not have a parent company that's not cruelty free so there are companies like Too faced becca tart there's there's a bunch of them smashbox um the list kind of goes on and on that have oh, CoverGirl. They are companies that are cruelty free. None of their products are tested on animals, but they're owned by a parent company. A lot of them being um, Cody, there's uh, Estee Lauder is one of them. L'Oreal is another one. And those companies are not cruelty free. Their products are tested. So people think that if you purchase from that company that it, you know, it does somehow support the, the parent company, which is also reasonable. The way that I like to look at it is I want people to see that cruelty free can be a very easy option to make. So I don't follow that strict rule that if it's owned by a parent company that's not, that I can't purchase from it or encourage other people to purchase it. Because if people um, need accessibility, if they want to run into a drugstore and there's CoverGirl and they pick something up, the fact that those products are cruelty free and haven't been tested on animals I think is is still worth it. I, I still think it is a vote um, and it shows to that the parent company to the parent company that people want um, cruelty free options. So it definitely does make a difference. For me I had seen um, Tashina at Logical Harmony kind of discuss her reasoning by, behind that as well. I have very similar um, kind of thoughts as she does on the matter and she had said it's really no different than if I were to go to a restaurant that shows or, or buy from a store that has uh, non-cruelty free options and buy the cruelty free option because my vote is still counting towards that cruelty free option and shows whoever you're buying from that there is a demand for those products. So. That being said, <laughs> then we're, we're gonna start getting into even more things. All right, in the past year and a half, things started changing with Chinese laws. One of them was that if you were making your products in China, you can be exempt from pre-market testing. But that didn't mean that you were exempt from post-market testing, meaning that no animal testing happens while the product is being made, created, and then put on the shelves. But if someone lodged a complaint after they bought their product, the Chinese government had the right to go pull those products from the shelves and test the products on animals. So recently there were a bunch of brands that started to sell in China because they felt like they were exempt from testing because of this. Uh, the major one being Wet n Wild. It was a really huge, um, really sad day when that happened. There was also a major lack of transparency because the brand wasn't being honest about selling in China to begin with. It was then followed by Physicians Formula that was doing the same thing. I believe they had the same parent company. And then most recently in the past month or so, First Aid Beauty just did that as well. And my fear going into this was that more brands that were made in China were going to do this because there's money to be made and the almighty dollar is very powerful. They could still then claim that they were cruelty free because PETA was uh, certifying them as cruelty free, which was making it very confusing. And honestly, I don't really trust PETA very much to begin with. I always say go leap, Leaping Bunny, um, Cruelty Free International, definitely check out Tashina at Logical Harmony. Those are the best cruelty free, free resources to have. So a lot of these brands started kind of doing it. And then you have these brands that I'm like, this isn't a cruelty-free brand. And they were still kind of saying they were. Um, the ones that I could think of most recently is Dove and Herbal Essences, which I never considered to be cruelty-free to begin with. But again, because they were being married in China and then being sold in China, they were kind of finding this loophole that was 
not really a loophole because if there's the chance of post-market testing, I always thought you can be considered cruelty-free, so I never did. So are you guys still with me? I know it's kind of confusing, but mostly I can follow this. I had no problem with this. This is what I was, I've been following since I entered the cruelty-free space. So what kind of started to convolute things? I'm gonna get to in just about a minute, but I have to make one more point before I get to that point. So um, there was Humane Society International published a report recently in the past couple of weeks that stated that China is ending mandatory pre-market animal testing for imported cosmetics. So this is a really big deal because remember how I was saying that if this product made in America wants to be imported into China, they're going to have to have third-party testing in order to go to mainland China, whereas products in, made in China were able to get on the shelves without animal testing. So now these products could technically go to China and avoid pre-market testing for imported cosmetics. Susanna from Cruelty Free Kitty actually um, went really quite in depth about these laws that are going into effect in 2021. They're gonna end pre-market animal testing for ordinary cosmetics. What does this mean for China to eliminate pre-market animal testing for imported ordinary cosmetics? That means that beauty brands will no longer need to have ordinary cosmetics tested on animals in order to sell in China. What impact will it have? It will spare an estimated 50,000 to 120,000 rabbits per year. That's, that's a lot of animals to save. It's, it's great news, but I'm not done yet because I still have a lot of fears and concerns. So ordinary cosmetics are um, most beauty products, skincare, makeup, and fragrance. Special use, which is exempt from this, is sunscreen, hair dye, and whitening creams. The regulations take effect to January 1st, 2021. So this is an official statement. Um, I really hope that it, it, it does go through. However, it still does not take away the um, possible use of post-market animal testing. So there's still a risk. That means if there's a product, someone makes a complaint, post-market testing can still happen, which is why I don't think you could consider something cruelty-free. My fear again with all this is that all these brands are gonna be like, oh, we can enter the Chinese market now. And then it's gonna be like, oh my God, but if something goes wrong, you know, cr testing can still happen. So there's part of me that's so excited because this is what we want, right? Us cruelty-free bloggers, we wanna make that difference. We want to eventually eradicate animal testing because it's an, it's an awful, hurtful, unnecessary, practice that still happens. It still shocks me that we still do it. And so as a lover of animals, it just, for me, I, I can't understand the reason why you need to harm an animal to have a pretty lipstick or a blush. It just doesn't make any sense. But here's the information that just dropped this past week that even convolutes everything even more and has made me start questioning everything. It was brought to my attention by Sarah from Kitty Approved. She's awesome, by the way. I'll link all everyone's information below who I'm talking about, um, including like their Instagrams, if they have a YouTube. Um, she's really great. I, I really like her content a lot. And uh, we were quite friendly with one another. We chat every now and then. And she had posted an article from Jen from My Beauty Bunny, who's a very long time cruelty-free Los Angeles blogger. Now, Jen was very brave to publish this article on her blog. I think she knew what the reactions would be by many people, because there are very militaristic people out there that want things a certain way, that don't like to deviate from anything. Um, and this, this really changed my thinking. I know Sarah has also made a video about this. I haven't watched it yet, because I didn't I really just wanted this to be my thoughts and kind of my opinions and my view on this. So I'm going to read parts of this article from um, Jen's website, from My Beauty Bunny. She says, this is a really difficult post to write. I'm here to say that I believe I was wrong about post-market testing in China. This may be an unpopular opinion because several voices in the cruelty-free community disagree, but based on the information I have now, I now believe that some beauty brands that sell in China are cruelty-free. Based on my talks with nonprofits, brands, and consultants in China, 
she lists resources at the end of this post. I'll, I'll put this post down below so you can read it as well. I now believe that post-market testing in China is very unlikely, and furthermore, it's possible that it could happen in the U.S. or any country, although not likely. Just let that simmer for just a moment. I think, this is her again saying this, I think First Aid Beauty, Physicians Formula, Wet n Wild, and several other brands who sell in China are cruelty-free after all. What's the deal with post-market testing? Let me explain. After researching for several months, I now believe that the risk of post-market animal testing in China is low risk, but not much different from the U.S. or the EU, which is very, which is to say very low, but possible in any country. So whether it be China, which we always thought was the whole problem with animal testing, she's saying it could happen just as much in the US or the EU. It's the same standard for post-market testing. So she says, if you are avoiding a brand because they may be subject to post-market testing in China, you would also have to avoid any brand sold in the US or EU or any country because they may also be subject to post-market testing by regulators, authorities, or academia who are generally exempt from animal testing bans. And by the way, the US does not have a ban on animal testing yet. There are some bans in certain states, like California, which happened, I think, last year. But without a national ban, I think all that really does is set a good precedent for future laws. I can tell you that there are a lot of loopholes and non-cruelty-free brands are still being sold here in California, which is where she's based out of. It seems that a lot of animal testing is being done at the ingredient level by ingredient suppliers, not by the brand themselves. And it is often mandated by national governments. More on that below, she says. So, so if post-market testing is unlikely and also possible in any country, that means several PETA-approved brands such as First Aid Beauty, Wet n Wild, Physicians Formula, and others are going back on her cruelty-free list. The Leaping Bunny pilot program, oh yes, so uh, stepping away really quickly, Leaping Bunny does have a pilot program for um, products to be sold in China. They have an agreement that if things are sold there, there's in no way they can be tested on animals. So that's a really interesting point as well. So she says, I realize that this is a touchy subject and hotly debated in the cruelty for com free community, which it is. She says, I do not post this lightly. I have no agenda here. I'm just trying to sort through all of the spin and opinions and get down to the facts. I know it's hard when you've held a belief for a long time and then new information challenges your perception. Trust me, I know. Even though we've previously thought of certain brands as bad, like CoverGirl, for example, which is now Leaping Bunny certified, we have to appreciate when they actually listen and change their ways, which is totally true because when, when CoverGirl became cruelty-free, that was a huge deal. It set such a precedent. So are all brands that sell in China cruelty-free? No, and I wanna point this out too. She's saying it, but I completely agree with this statement. I want to be very clear that I'm not saying all brands that sell in China are cruelty-free. They have to jump through hoops in order, order to avoid pre-market testing. That has become easier in the last couple of years, but it's still not easy. Not every brand is willing to do it. I'm only saying that because I don't believe post-market testing is likely. So, for example, like there are brands in, that are selling in China that they're not cruelty-free. They, they won't really ever be considered that because they are openly testing. That goes for um, NARS, that goes for MAC, um, Kiehl's, those kind of brands. Those brands are not cruelty free. So is post-market testing actually happening in China? How often is it happening? According to Jen in her article here, she said that she learned from a consultant in China that no post-market testing has been done in China in the last few years. It's all public record, by the way, so this can be looked up online. Um, in the event of the complaint, they would gather non-animal testing data from the brands directly and do human patch tests and things of that nature. So it's just, it's saying that it hasn't happened in a long time, but it could happen. So because it could, we've always thought, well, it's not gonna be cruelty-free then. But the thing is, is that this can happen in the EU or US. And apparently it happened in the EU not that long ago because of a hair dye. That's what she says in here. So, yeah, she says a team of researchers in the EU actually published the results of their hair dye allergy study with boxed dye pulled directly from the shelves in a peer-reviewed journal. She says you could read it here, so it's in there. 
we don't know if it's happened in the U.S., but it can, which is the point. So if it can happen in here, then what's the difference if it happens there? My mind is just, what's the difference, right? Is it a racial thing? Part of me wonders is, do we not like it because it's, you know, from China and, you know, we know that the, the their government isn't the most um, transparent and all that stuff. Like, I don't know. I, I, guys, this, I have no pro problem being steadfast in my beliefs. But this has made me like question everything. And I honestly don't know what to do. I'm not, I'm not telling you to go and I'm not going and buying these brands that are now selling in China. I still don't feel quite comfortable. I feel like more information needs to come out. I'd like to hear to she Net Logical Harmony make a statement about it. I'd like for possibly, you know, Leaping Bunny to make a statement about it. Um, but this changes everything. And I don't know, you know, it's so, it's so hard enough, especially now, not even with just cruelty free, but supporting brands, it's always hard to discern who to support. I was talking to Emily from Emily Wolf Beauty on Insta, Instagram the other day, and she had posted something about another brand that had done something. And I was just like, oh my God, it's so hard to know who to support now. And she goes, I know, right? It's why I only support like five brands and I was laughing along with her but I really don't know what to do. I guess let's wait and see. I, again, I'm not running out and, and saying let's go support these brands, but it does change a lot. I'm very conflicted. I don't have an answer for you, unfortunately. I, I don't know, I just don't feel, like I still don't feel comfortable, but at the same time, like this kind of makes sense to me. So I'd like to see a statement made by other beauty bloggers, um, by other people who are experts in this field but at the end of the day i guess i just want to say to people you know go go with your gut and hopefully one day we can really eradicate animal testing for cosmetic purposes because it is just a terrible thing and it's it's a stain on our society um for sure so that's all I have. I wish I could be like more positive or excited or I, I don't know how to feel. Um, what are your thoughts down below? Um, how do you feel about this? Does this change the way you think about cruelty-free products? Um, yeah, I, I'm going to pass the ball back to you because I really don't have an answer right now. So thank you again so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed your coffee because right now I just keep sipping pensively. <laughs> <laughs> mm. thank you again for watching my friends if you made it through this very long video please comment down below with a peach emoji because you are sweet like a peach and until next time remember to stay compassionate and chic bye